Hello guys, welcome back to All The Time Spent Gaming's YouTube channel for my review of NHL 20. Another year, another installment in the NHL franchise. Let's start off by discussing the most obvious change in NHL 20, the in-game overlay graphics. The in-game scoreboard has been kept in the upper left corner for generations of NHL games, and for good reasons, I might add, but has now been moved to the lower end of the screen, covering it from side to side. This is part of EA Vancouver's overhaul of the in-game overlay graphics, and while the graphics themselves look a tad more modern than before, the scoreboard placement is just obviously a really bad choice. It has been somewhat cumbersome to see, for example, who scored the ace after a goal before, but it's now even harder. With the scoreboard in the upper left, it was possible to catch the ace while taking care of the face-off. But that's now impossible, since you cannot focus on the lower half of the screen while trying to win the puck in the face of A small but infuriating change. To go alongside with the overhaul of the in-game graphics, there's also new commentators in NHL 20 and new pre-match introductions. Hi everybody, welcome to Vancouver along with Ray Perot. I'm James Sabalski. All of these feel like a step down in ambition from NHL 19, which had nice TV style presentations. But they are also much snappier and might get less boring to repeatedly watch while sinking hundreds of hours into the franchise mode. The commentators are as repetitive to listen to as always though, so expect to hear them repeat the same generic nonsense over and over again, just as always. Vancouver's got the puck along the boards! That's a solid check Whoa. on the play! Puck grabbed by Pedersen, and that one stopped! It's not as bad as NHL 06 Swedish commentators were, but well, nothing could ever be. NOL 20 runs on the same Ignite engine that the series has used since the jump to the current generation of consoles, and the engine really starts to show its age. While all other sport franchises from EA has made a jump to Frostbite, which started already with FIFA and Madden 17, EA Vancouver seems to be determined to keep using Ignite, for better or for worse. Ignite is a current generation engine, but it lacks some modern features compared to Frostbite. One of those are realistic material work. While FIFA and Madden uses real life material work for its textures, NOL 20 seems to use the last gen type of models. Ignite also lacks up to date lighting solutions, such as global illumination and volumetric lighting, which are used quite heavily in FIFA to set the right tone in matches and create that thick game day type of atmosphere. I'm Derek Ray, joined for commentary by the former Arsenal defender Lee Dixon. And this is where it all starts in the UEFA Champions League. The group stage and match day one. My goodness, so much to look forward to. Even effects such as motion blur and depth of field are of much lower quality in NOL 20 than in the FIFA series. Player likeness is a big part of the presentation in any sports game. NOL 20 lacks compared to its competitors here as well. While FIFA includes scanned real-life player models. Even cover athletes such as Elias Pettersson looks generic and AI created in NOL 20. It's a shame that EA cannot show the sport and the fans the appreciation needed in this regard. Compared to the competition in the sporting genre, as for example EA's own FIFA series or Konami's Pro Evolution Soccer series, both of which I have played a few hours of during this week, NOL 20 looks like a much older game. Everything from the arenas to the player faces and overall material work and animations looks old and a bit dull. And EA Vancouver really needs to step up their game and make the move to Frostbite when they make the jump to the next generation of consoles, because the NHL series is already lacking in the graphical department. Nice graphics and well-produced game introductions are nice, at least the first time you watch them, but they will not keep you playing for hours on end. What will keep you playing for hours on end is good gameplay. Whoa! My first brilliantly fought out segue! Come on guys, give me the applause! Yay! NOL 20 is built on the solid foundation of its predecessors. The NHL series revolutionized digital hockey in NHL 07. With the introduction of Skillstick, each and every iteration since then has seen improvements to the control, the AI and the overall realism on the ice. And NHL 20 is no different. EA Vancouver has focused on the shooting, overall momentum when receiving the puck and the goalies to this installment. And the result is faster matches with an overall better flow. The shooting has been a bit of an open wound for the series since NHL 15, when the series hit the current generation of consoles. The great strides that EA Vancouver 
Vancouver has made since then in overall animation quality hasn't been met by changes in how players take shots from opaque angles. That's now changed. EA Vancouver states that they have recorded a multitude of new shooting animations, and I somewhat believe them. To go alongside that, EA Vancouver has also changed the AI and how the player decides to position the stick when for example waiting on a pass to make a direct shot. It works quite well and removes some of the wonkiness from the previous games, but it's not perfect. You will still see some strange and powerless shots in situations where you shouldn't. The goalless has also been improved, with a set of new animations and changes to the AI. The reduction in goals scored on cheap returns is the overall most noticeable improvement, and it certainly reduces frustration. Good work EA. NHL 20 has seen some other improvements to animations as well. In earlier games the player who received a pass would often have to stall to be able to reach the puck. That's now changed and it's therefore much easier to keep momentum going when trying to set up a play from your own zone. The improvements to shooting and the improved receiving of the puck leads to matches with higher tempo that feels a bit more like real hockey than before. NHL 20 isn't necessarily realistic though since the overall animation work still lacks in polish and looks a bit wonky compared to other more realistic sport titles such as FIFA 20 and maybe most of all, Pro Evolution Soccer. NHL 19 introduced a couple of new game modes to the series, such as Once and World of COL, where you create your own player and compete against or together in online game modes such as challenges and matches. All of these return to NHL 20, with some improvements. Once and 3v3 matches can now be played in eliminated tournaments which require your team to win 4 matches in a row to be crowned the winner. Once now brings the Once experience offline and makes it playable with your friends in local co-op, making for some fun and intriguing matches perfect for your pre-parties. World of COL and ONCE are structured around grinding for rewards. Rewards in the form of, yeah you guessed it, loot boxes or surprise mechanics as EA would call them. These modes are a nice but small addition to the series, but they feel little more than just another incentive for EA to shuffle even more microtransactions down our throats. It's insulting that in-game items that you earn in NHL 19 doesn't follow you into NHL 20. I mean it's the same freaking items that are present in NHL 20 as in NHL 19. And I felt little to no incentive to unlock all of them them once more. I will most likely play once from time to time, despite all the microtransaction bollocks. Even more insulting than the microtransaction are the netcode bugs in once, which were common in the beta for these game modes back in NHL 19. The bugs include freezing at the start of a match, which are still present in NHL 20. Shame on you EA. The online multiplayer is riddled with other problems as well, such as not punishing players enough for leaving matches, which result in everyone just abandoning the match when there are down a couple of goals in the first period. Common for all the problems with the multiplayer is that they have been present for quite some time now, and it seems like they're down to either limitations in the game engine or to laziness of the developer. Either or, it's not good enough for a franchise with a yearly iteration not to fix these problems. Other than the now mentioned game modes, franchise mode is the only game mode that I've seen some love this year. The improvements to the franchise mode are welcome, but small, and include the ability to hire trainers and more effectively shop for new players. Other gamers such as Be A Pro hasn't seen any improvements since the introduction of the series to the current generation of consoles in 2014 and really likes behind the competition. Why doesn't EA Vancouver introduce something like FIFA's journey mode in NHL? Or why don't they at least let you start off in a league such as the Swedish Hockey League in the Bria Pro career mode? The only game mode that I really need in an NHL game is a great single player career mode where I can start off with a new expansion team building it up to becoming one of the greatest franchises in the NHL. Which I did in NHL 19 where my team league gaming gamers won a total of 7 Stanley Cups. The franchise mode is still present and does still hold these abilities, so that's where I will spend most of my hours in the game. To the point it goes! Shot! Score! Someone's huge! Finally! Finally! Somebody's on the board here! They're able to get a goal, now it gives them a late lead. Okay, so let's summarize NHL 20. NHL 20 is one of those games that might deserve two scores. If you're one of those who buy every other game in the NHL series, then the changes in NHL 19 and 20 combined makes this one of the best NHL games ever. But if you're like me, someone who buys each and every installment in the series and who sinks a couple of thousand hours into the franchise mode each and every year, then NHL 20 isn't enough of an evolution to be worthy of your purchase. NHL 20 is still a somewhat good game. It has decent graphics, overall okay gameplay, and a great 
great variation in available game modes. It does lag behind the competition though, and feels a lot older than other sports games such as FIFA 20, PES 20 and NBA 2K20. The foundation is still okay, but evolution and innovation is needed to once again turn the NHL series into one of the greatest sport franchises. And the score is therefore a mere 6 out of 10. NHL 20 is an okay game, but it's not worthy of your $60, and it would have been better off as a DLC to NHL 19. Okay guys, that's all for today. If you like this video, I hope you like it here on YouTube. If you dislike it, dislike it and leave an angry comment. If you want to follow me, you can do so on Instagram, Facebook or on my own webpage www.allthetimespentgaming.com Until next time, have a great week of gaming.